Hello, my name is Alex Nissen, and it's my pleasure to present our group's work regarding rib fractures and forced vital capacity from the Brook Army Medical Center Division of Trauma and Surgical Critical Care. Here is our standard disclaimer that what I'm about to present represents work done by and the views of the investigational team only. None of the investigators have any conflicts of interest to disclose. Rib fractures are common among the blunt trauma population. Complications after rib fractures are a common consequence of inadequate ventilation. Predicting appropriate level of care is critical to prevent morbidity and mortality, yet there is a dearth of literature evaluating the utility of bedside spirometry in this population. Forced vital capacity represents an understudied spirometric value that can be rapidly and readily obtained at the bedside. We sought to examine the utility of bedside FVC in predicting complications for patients suffering blunt traumatic rib fractures, hypothesizing that admission FVC greater than or equal to 50% predicted would be associated with reduced pulmonary complications. Our pilot study involved a prospective observational cohort of adult patients with three or more acute traumatic rib fractures who were non-intubated at the time of admission without cervical spinal cord injury or moderate to severe TBI that could prevent participation in bedside spirometry and other exclusion criteria listed here. We performed bedside spirometry within six hours of admission using the standard right Mark 8 spirometer. FVC was recorded and percent predicted values were calculated using conventional methods. Our primary outcomes are listed here. Pulmonary complications represented a composite endpoint defined as any unplanned intubation, pneumonia, tracheostomy, or ICU readmission. Conventional statistics were used for comparisons, including Wilcoxon's test for nonparametric continuous variables and the Cochrane Armitage trend test for categorical variables. 79 consecutive patients were enrolled at the time of analysis, 23 with admission FVC of 0 to 29% predicted, defined as low, 36 patients with admission FVC of 30 to 49% predicted, defined as moderate, and 20 patients with admission FVC greater than or equal to 50% predicted, defined as high. Reasons for screening exclusions are listed here for 29 patients, and an additional 73 patients were excluded based on obtaining an admission FVC outside the six-hour window from the time of their ER arrival. Group showed similar baseline characteristics in terms of age, smoking status, pulmonary comorbidities, injury severity score, and chest abbreviated injury score, or AIS, with the exception of pneumothorax being most frequent in the low FVC group. However, overall, groups showed similar baseline characteristics. The low admission FVC group similarly required tube thoracostomy most frequently as shown here, while invasive neuraxial pain control, VATS evacuation of retained hemothorax, and rib plating were rare. Zero patients required tracheostomy. Non-home discharge was most frequent in both the low and moderate FVC groups compared to the high admission FVC group as shown here. However, pulmonary complications were infrequent in all groups with only one death in the entire cohort due to non-pulmonary causes. Specifically, there were no occurrences of pneumonia, ARDS, empyema, or aspiration in the entire cohort. In conclusion, patients with three or more traumatic root fractures who are non-intubated at the time of admission without associated cervical spinal cord injury or TBI may harbor a low-risk cohort in need of further study to prevent over-triage, specifically including those with admission FVC greater than or equal to 50% predicted who are also at low risk of non-home discharge. Our study has notable limitations that are worth mentioning, including a limited sample size, at least somewhat related to logistic difficulties obtaining bedside FVC rapidly on admission, and we are unable to correlate our results with the exact number of fractured ribs and do not have long-term outcomes to report. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present our work and can open up the discussion at this time.